We expect to get the Pfizer vaccine tomorrow, Tuesday, December 15th. We've been planning the logistics on how to administer this for a long time. We think we're going to be able to start administering it on Wednesday, December 16th, as we roll things out for our health care providers and for residents of nursing homes. We're very hopeful that we will get sufficient doses during the first shipment to cover our entire priority group 1A. We think that's going to be the case. We won't know until we get the actual shipment in hand. If that's not the case, then we will prioritize those with the most risky exposures, including those who directly work on COVID-19 floors, for instance, and the priority list works down from there. The current guidance remains the same. Priority Group 1A includes healthcare workers with direct contact with patients and nursing home residents. Those will be the first groups of individuals who re receive the vaccine. The guidance is that if you get the first dose, you get the second dose somewhere between days 17 and 21 after the first dose. However, the guidance further goes on to say that if you miss that 21-day window, you still go on to get the second dose and you don't have to repeat the first dose. So bottom line is try your best to get it between 17 and 21 days, but if you miss that, get that second dose anyway because you don't have full protection unless you get that second dose and the full protection really kicks in about a week or two after that second dose. The current advice is that if you've had COVID-19 already that you do get the vaccination. A couple of reasons for that. We don't know how long-lived protection is after natural infection. We think the vaccine will provide additional protection. Moreover, there are some very rare cases of reinfection, so we do know that at least some people would be liable or at risk of getting reinfection, and they should get the vaccine. There were people in the trials who had had COVID who got the vaccine, so we know it does no harm. So really, the better part of valor is to get the vaccine. We do re recommend that if you are within 90 days of having COVID-19, that you can wait that 90-day period before you get the vaccine series. So if you've been exposed to COVID-19, you'll be in quarantine until we know whether you've acquired infection or not. We recommend that you stay in quarantine, and as testing takes place, if you don't have infection, you can go right ahead and get the vaccine. If you do have infection, you have the option of waiting those 90 days before you start the vaccine series. If you have had COVID-19 and you're past that 90 days, you can go ahead and start the vaccine series, and there are even some who may decide to start the vaccine series if you're within that 90-day period. The guidance is that one have 14 days either before or after either vaccine. So they should not be given concurrently or together. If you get the influenza vaccine, wait 14 days before you start the COVID-19 series. And if you get the COVID-19 series, wait 14 days after that second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine before you get influenza vaccine or any other vaccines for that matter. The answer to that is yes. In fact, the trials targeted those with, uh, with chronic diseases that put people at risk for severe COVID-19. So diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and so forth 
are reasons actually to get the vaccine, and there's no contraindication at all that would tell you to not take the vaccine. So if you've received either convalescent plasma or monoclonal antibody therapy for COVID-19, yes, you should still get the vaccine for COVID-19. We do recommend that you wait 90 days after those treatments so that the antibody can leave your body and you will be able to respond fully and completely to the vaccine so your body makes its own antibody to protect you. The immunocompromised can receive the COVID-19 vaccination. Immunocompromised persons were not part of the study group. However, the real concern is that they would not respond fully to the vaccine. It's not really that they would have unexpected side effects, but rather that they might have an incomplete response to the vaccine. Because of their immunocompromised diseases, they might be more at risk for severe illness. Having said all that, because they were not part of the initial studies, the answer I'm giving is my best answer based on all the knowledge that we know about other vaccines and the types of therapies that immunocompromised people might get. If you have an immunocompromising disease, you may well want to talk to your physician and consider the risk benefits with your physician before deciding to go ahead with the vaccination. Again, pregnant and lactating women were not part of the initial trials of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine series. It's a risk-benefit calculation. So for instance, if you are a healthcare worker who is exposed to people with COVID-19, you may decide in concert with your physician that getting the vaccine for COVID-19 makes sense. The benefits outweigh the risks. The same for lactating women. On the other hand, you may decide that you want to wait until there's more information about this vaccine in pregnant women. So the guidance is, if you're in a high-risk occupation and you're pregnant or lactating, consider getting the vaccine because that will protect you and your unborn infant. There's always, with a new vaccine, unknown areas, so you do need to have that discussion with your physician before proceeding. The vaccine has been approved for people 16 years of age and older, and that's who will go ahead and administer the vaccine for their protection. Younger than 16, we're gonna to have to wait for more studies. There are two instances where we wanna be cautious with administering the COVID-19 vaccine to those who have had allergic reactions. One is if you've had an allergic or severe reaction to this actual vaccine. Since only the trial participants have taken the vaccine, that shouldn't apply to anyone who's getting the vaccination now. All the rest is either you have no contraindication or no reason not to take the vaccine, or there are precautions. In the precaution category is, those who have had severe allergic reactions to other vaccines and those who have had severe allergic reactions to injectables like antibiotic infusions or things like that. What do we mean by severe reactions? You've heard about the two UK cases where the people may have had anaphylactic reactions. Those are severe reactions, low blood pressure, profuse sweating, dizziness, that sort of thing. It's not entirely clear that those two people had anaphylactic reactions, but in abundance of caution, what we recommend is that people who have had those kinds of reactions be observed for 30 minutes after vaccine administration and to get the vaccine in a place where we can handle, like a hospital or a clinic, those kinds of reactions. I want to make it clear to everyone, though, that these kinds of severe vaccine-related reactions are not the same as side effects. Side effects to the vaccine occur. 
there not any reason to avoid getting vaccinations. Those could include arm pain, uh, some other kinds of uh, nausea or fatigue or fever. You need to still get the vaccine, and importantly, you need to go on and get that second vaccine so you have complete immunity. I think that the guidance is very clear. This vaccine is essential for people to get to help protect themselves and also everyone else, and so that we can stop the spread of COVID-19 and open up society again. We're talking about very detailed information today. Overall, this vaccine is very, very safe. Yes, it has side effects, but those are manageable. They occur 10 to 24 hours after vaccine administration. They can include fever, muscle aches, those sorts of things, arm pain. You can take analgesics, you can take antipyretics, meaning aspirin or acetaminophen. Those side effects are a little more common with the second dose than the first. So if you have those side effects with the first dose, do not avoid the second dose. You need that second dose to get protection. So my main message is overall, this is a very safe vaccine. You should get it to protect yourself and the community.